If you're in the market for an all electric family seven seater and you don't want to spend upwards of 100 grand for the likes of the Rivians and the Teslas, well, there is a solution in the market in the form of the 2024 Kia EV9. The EV9 is basically based on the EV6, a very successful EV product, but elongated to accommodate three rows of seats. Let's see how this electrified seven seater is. You come to the front end of the EV9, it's very striking looking and it does not look like a regular commuter car in traffic. It really stands out. People love to crane their neck and have a second glance at it. The LEDs are very cool. The headlight units, it stands out. It's very bright. It's a very cool design element in the whole overall look of the front end. You've got some cool LEDs in the grille if I can say or it's more like a plaque because it's not a grille. Obviously it doesn't open, it doesn't need ventilation because there is no engine behind but the LED pattern can be changed through the infotainment and it stands out on the road. It's a definitely a party trick which you can show off to your friends. You do have lots of gloss black elements, brushed aluminium at the bottom and you do have vents that open and close depending if the batteries need ventilation if you've been driving for a long time. What can I say? It actually stands out on the road very cool design by Kia. What also helps the appeal is this paint. It's called Ocean Blue and it really stands out. Just when the sun is right and it's clean, it really pops. And I think this is one of the major contributing factors of why people want to have a second look at this vehicle. Also in the front, you do have a small frunk. That's what they call the front trunk. So it's frunk. You can put in a backpack or two at best but it's not very practical maybe just for your daily commute if you have a backpack that's it it won't be able to accommodate much more it's a ground up ev so kia had to incorporate it many evs nowadays that have been converted from a gas engine car to ev don't have frunk so that's definitely a small bonus to have when you come to the side of the ev9 is when you truly realize that this is a three row vehicle this can accommodate people in all three rows and you can tell that from the wheelbase it's very long it's been designed to have a cab forward design so you can see it does not have too much overhangs in the front and the rear the maximum space has been utilized for the wheelbase and it looks really cool you do have gloss black elements on the arches that extend from the bumper you have sort of cladding on the side and then the gloss black extends all the way to the rear bumper you do have blacked out mirrors as well and you do have very cool door handles as well which go flush with the body when you lock it and they come out when you unlock it. I just hope that this works in freezing conditions like minus 30. But yeah, the design element is pretty cool and overall it's very boxy on the side and it does lend a sort of minivan look that Kia has been trying with the EV9 but I don't mind it because it's definitely funky and that's the whole theme that Kia has been trying to work with this EV9. You come from the long side profile onto the rear, you'll notice this funky 21 inch wheels which are, let's be honest, very funky and obviously it's been designed to have aerodynamic efficiency at its peak. So it's definitely very unique and then you do have the charge port as well which you can use to obviously charge the vehicle, it's an EV. But then you come to the rear and it's definitely got lots of cuts and creases because it is a Kia and it has to be funky and it has to stand on the road. And the first thing that will catch your eye are these taillights. So you have this extension which then extends a little bit on the tailgate as well. It's got this nice LED unit which again looks really really good especially at night. You do have lots of black elements. Obviously this does not have exhaust cutouts because there is none. So they just have to put some cuts and creases here. You do have a lot of brushed aluminium elements always on the bottom. You do have a bit of a spoiler as well. The rear wiper is very beautifully integrated, I have to mention. It's not sticking out on a store thumb, it's actually stored very beautifully inside the spoiler. And yeah, you've got some basic badging as well. You've got the big Kia logo, which actually looks like KN. And yeah, overall, you've got some basic badging here and there to make sure people understand what car they're looking at. And then you can obviously get access to the tailgate as well, which if I open it, takes a bit of a while to open but once it opens you get access to a decent boot space with all three rows up so as you can see I have the third row up I can put in easily a few backpacks which is more than sufficient for your weekend family trip
I'm now inside the Kia EV9 and it's a very unique, funky place to be inside. You've got lots of cool design elements, lots of conventional stuff as well. So Kia has found the perfect mix of making it cool yet making it work. You do have a very big screen. So you do have the screens for the wireless CarPlay, all the settings. And then you do have a small screen to play around with the AC controls. And then you have the bigger screen for the Speedo details the odometer the trip everything the graphics are very nice it's overall very beautifully integrated and as a one single screen it works really well you do have some buttons that is embedded onto the panel which only lights up so it's actually got haptic touch so if you press it you get a vibration and then you can play around with them settings so you have the home map media and setup so that's pretty pretty cool again so that's one of the funky elements that kia has managed to integrate so beautifully you do have ac vents as well uh, you do have a volume roller which maybe could have been repositioned because it stands out a bit too much you do have physical ac buttons as well so if you don't want to use the touch you can use the physical buttons which is very very cool you do have cool design elements on the dash you do have cool design elements all over the cutouts for the speakers and everything just stands out also you do have a big cubby space so this is the minivan part uh, the last time i saw this kind of storage was in a minivan so you have a big storage bin you do have some usb ports and you can store a lot of stuff you do have a slide in cup holder as well which you can put in some stuff you have a wireless charger which takes in my phone really well you do have a center armrest to accommodate some more stuff it's very practical very well thought well placed everything is just where it should be which is perfect steering wheel is very unique so i've seen flat bottom steering wheels but this is a flat top so it's more like an oval steering wheel you do have the volume buttons the cruise control buttons and then you do have drive modes and terrain modes this is all wheel drive so you can put it into snow mud and sand and you can always choose eco normal sport which is pretty cool uh, overall it just feels very nice to hold you do have paddle shifters but this is more for the region braking so you can adjust the region levels which is pretty cool and also what stands out is because you don't have a gear lever you have this gear stick which you can rotate to put into drive and reverse and that's where the start stop button is now if you put someone driving this car for the first time and ask them to find the start stop button it will take a while honestly i drive a lot of cars but it took me a good two or three minutes to find the button because i was just looking everywhere and i couldn't find it but it's actually pretty cool once you get used to it it's pretty handy it's very nice you do have the same patterns of the door as well which is leather and you've got some cool finish over here this is all again it's sustainable material so none of this is actually pure leather which is again a good bonus to have the seats are very nice they've got this very cool pattern of white and gray which looks good you've got lots of perforation lots of nice stitching as well which is again feels very premium feels very worthy of the price tag you have a host of adjustments so you do have under thigh support which it comes out which is honestly one of the coolest ways of incorporating adjustable under thigh support in any car you do have adjustable lumbers which actually tighten up themselves when you put into sport mode or when you cross a certain speed you do have lots of adjustments for the actual lumbar so you can go up and down front and back which is cool and one of the softest headrests i've seen under hundred thousand dollars it's so so comfortable it's honestly such a great place to sit and also what is a bonus is the addition of massage seats for the driver the passenger doesn't get it but the ma driver gets massage seats which is such a bonus which you can control a host of these buttons from the door so you have the heated steering cooled seats heated seats massage everything you can control from the driver door and there's also cool buttons so you can adjust the passenger seat from the button so there are some additional buttons here on the side panel for the rear passengers if they want more legroom they can just easily move the seat which is such a nifty feature honestly for the people in the second row it's so practical kia has just killed it with the design and the functionality of the interior i can spend very long hours sitting in this driving seat and driving and not feel out of place or uncomfortable in any way I'm now in the second row of the EV9. As you can see, space is really not an issue. This driving seat is for my driving position. I have tons of knee room, a lot of headroom, enough space to tuck in my feet. It's just perfect to be carried around in the second row. It's one of the better second rows I've seen. You do have an adjustable armrest as well, which is very, very cool. The seats also move electrically, so I can move the backrest or I can move the seat forward as well. And an additional feature, you do have under thigh support as well. So this actually comes up. I don't know if it's visible on camera, but it's really, really slow. And if I move all the way back and if I move the under thigh support, I can actually just chill and perhaps just sleep. 
This is borderline business class levels on an airline. It's so so good. The windows are so big. You do have blinds as well, so you can be completely cut off from the world. You do have a separate sunroof from the driver so the driver has a small one which opens this does not open but it's a big glass which lends in some light which is again very heavily tinted but it's very very nice you do have the same pattern for the seats so the white and the gray which again just looks so so good and yeah what can i say it's just practical again you do have storage which you can put lots of stuff inside very well thought by kia in the second row what can i say i Perhaps I'd like to say that I might like to be driven around this vehicle as much as I'd like to drive it. It's that good in the second row. I am now in the third row of the EV9. As you can see, I can fit. I had to make some adjustments to the second row, but I've made sure that the second row has enough legroom as well. And I can easily fit in the third row. It's not the most comfortable. My knees are a bit pointed up, but I can move this a little bit more. So I'll get some more feet, uh, space my feet as well. Overall, it's very airy as well. You do have big glasses on the side as well. And that's lots of cool stuff. So there's type C ports for both sides on the third row. And you can electrically control and incline and decline the third row backrest as well so if i want to get really comfortable i can lie down and just chill this is one of the coolest features i've seen on any third row you can recline the the backrest of the third third row as well and you can get so comfortable for long journeys i would say it can accommodate decent size adults and some taller adults for shorter journeys as well which is a great bonus of this three row suv I'm now behind the wheel of the 2024 Kia EV9. So let's get the numbers out of the way. This has a 99.5 kilowatts electric motors, all wheel drive, 379 horsepower. It does weigh 2.65 tons and you can get a lower variant with only rear wheel drive, lesser horsepower and more range. The estimated range on this is about 450 kilometers. I got the car at 82% and I have driven this car for about 300 eight about yeah 300 kilometers and i have about 10 percent of charge so i think realistically on a hundred percent charge i can get sub 400 which is commendable for a three row suv so let's see how this crossover drives slot it into drive and we set off and it's very very quiet very silent like how every ev is it just feels weird to drive bigger vehicles in fully electric but yeah i'm on a very patchy surface of road it's muddy it's got some stones rocks and it's handling it fairly decently even though this is running on 21 inch wheels and the profile could have been a bit thicker but yeah overall it feels uh perfect i mean there is some horizontal movement which is unwanted honestly that could have been a bit like if it was a bit more better that way the, 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 the ride would have been perfect but that horizontal movement can be a little disconcerting here and there especially on bigger bumps that you take it with speed now i'm on some perfect tarmac so we can actually set off and just drive this car on perfect tarmac and you'll see on perfect tarmac there is no movement at all there is a slight humming noise that comes which i can obviously you know just turn it off in the setting i have it off on because you know it's just fun to have some noise when you're driving but otherwise it's just so peaceful so nice so composed on the open road and you can actually drive it very comfortably for long distances provided you have enough range my battery right now is at 19% so it's not the highest but it still pulls if I floor it it still pulls pretty well and I'm in eco mode I can obviously change the drive modes through the steering and there is normal and then there is sport mode and if I slow it down a little bit and as soon as I put it to sport my lumbers just hug me a bit more the side lump and if I floor it oh, and it just picks up nothing like a two points almost 2.7 ton vehicle should and I'm way beyond the speed limit in like a few seconds which is very very commendable 0 to 100 is roughly around the 6 second mark 6.5 second and I can see it doing it in that much time because EVs pull relentlessly from lower speeds and this is no different it still pulls very well but if I put it back into even if I put it to normal mode the suspension becomes a little nicer and it just cruises well barring that extra horizontal movement which I don't like on bumps it rides and handles really well the steering feel is really nice and you don't particularly feel the weight uh, when you're pushing it around the corners which is a very commendable 
job by Kia on the tuning of the suspension. The motor has power most of the driving or most of the range where you need to floor it in different scenarios. You won't feel a shortage of power, which is again a traditional EV characteristic. What can I say? I've been driving this vehicle around in a variety of situations and I've honestly enjoyed it. The range isn't too bad. Roughly 400, 410 kilometers is honestly not a bad range from zero. What can I say? I was really excited to drive this vehicle since a really long time and I'm glad I finally got my chance because I haven't been let down. This is one of the better driving three row crossovers in the market today. In conclusion then, the 2024 Kia EV9. Well, I personally really, really enjoyed this three-row SUV. It drives really well, it's very spacious, it's got all the cool features as well, and it can move itself. There's nobody in the car. I've been moving the car forward and backward just with the key. Such a cool gimmick, right? And this car has the host of gimmicks and party tricks which you can show off to your family and friends. Yet, it's so practical. As an EV, it drives really well. It's got enough range, real world range of about 430 to 450 kilometers, which is very decent for a three row SUV. It looks very striking. It's very unique on the road. You don't see too many on the road. In fact, I've only seen one other than this. So it definitely turns a lot of heads. At $85,000, close to $85,000 for this top of the line GT line, it's definitely on the expensive side. But if you want something that can carry three rows of people and luggage there is nothing really in the market under a hundred thousand there is only like the likes of the tesla model x's and the rivians which are very expensive so this is in its own space so if you want a seven seater you really don't have a lot of options and this is your only go-to vehicle which is not a bad thing because i personally have enjoyed my week thoroughly with the kia ev9